galaxy formation seems to have, seems to have started with uh, the combination of helium nuclei with electrons. The original Big Bang fireball uh, has a property that it's easy to compute the ratio of hydrogen to helium in the uh, in the fireball, assuming that everything started out from a state of being very, very crushed and high energy. It turns out there should be about 30% helium in the fireball and about 70% hydrogen. So that the first, as the fireball cools, the first, uh, the first atoms to form are singly ionized helium atoms. Uh, when that happens, according to the equation of state for a perfect gas, the particle number in the P equals NKT equation goes down. That is, there are, uh, there are fewer uh, particles. So if the, there's a pressure drop. <coughs> we experience a phenomenon like the, uh, the wind going out of a sail, causing the sail to billow. In this case, uh, because of the pressure drop, gravitation can gather clouds of material the size determined by evaporation from the cloud surface. You see, because uh, an atom of, at the temperature of the helium transition, where the recombination occurs, could evaporate from the surface of the cloud if it could escape from the gravitational potential of the cloud. Uh, what is done is we assume that the, that the original Big Bang fireball uh, has, at the time of galaxy formation, the same average density as the Milky Way galaxy. And uh, the temperature uh, of the uh, first helium recombination transition. Uh, then, uh, using potential theory, we can compute uh, the, the size of the cloud required to keep gases from uh, evaporating from the surface of the cloud. In fact, the criterion, in fact, the criterion that's used is the evaporation of hydrogen. Uh, it turns out that the spherical cloud uh, has, a, has a much smaller extent, it's much smaller radius than, than a flattened spiral if you use this. We can use the spherical uh, equations of gravitation first developed by uh, Sir Isaac Newton to uh, determine the radius of these relatively smaller spherical galaxies that will form. And, uh, to, to determine the uh, approximate thickness of the, uh, of, the, of the flattened spirals that will form, you can uh, use uh, Gauss's expression for the gravitational potential of a plate, of a thin plate. Then you can get the thickness of the, uh, the galaxies from that. As, <coughs> as it turns out, uh, after material inside the cloud settles, uh, uh, it has very, this has very little effect on the gravitational potential outside the cloud. As a matter of fact, um, you can change the distribution of matter inside a collapsed spherical cloud or a collapsing spherical cloud, and the gravitational potential outside the mass is still the same. So, although the galaxies